This is a live automotive buffet. We talk about all sorts of stuff in the automotive business. We've got a really good show this week. It's, it's different than we've had last time. We've got two guests. I have here, I have Roger Beauchamp from JB's Power Center. He's going to be talking about some tips for buying car stereo equipment, how to keep it affordable. It's going to be really interesting. And Dean Human from Race Week Edmonton, he's going to tell us all of the stuff that's going on around the Edmonton Indy. It's not just the race itself. It's not just stuff that's going on on the track and in different different areas on the property. So basically There's everything but the Indy? Everything but, about everything, except the Indy. everything around, everything supporting the Indy. Right um, and that voice you just heard, the golden tones, the mellifluous sound, that's Evan Adams. <laughs> he's going to be monitoring the chat room, and he's going to be letting us know if there's any questions you guys have for the people that are... That are up here, or for me, or or anything. Um, he's, also, he, peanut gallery. Yeah, yes, he, and, he, and he makes good comments. It keeps us on a on the straight and narrow. Keeps us moving forward, yeah, or something. Oh, and he pushes magic buttons back there that make all this stuff happen. He's he's amazing. Don't 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 underestimate that man. Um, so so if you've got questions, post them in the chat area down down below there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, comment. Same same area. Same yeah, thing. We do Double. read the comments. We do read the comments. I mean, and they hurt to... people. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear your feedback. We want to hear what you got to say. And you know what? If there's something that we didn't cover, um, one of our guests uh, uh, touched on but didn't go in quite far enough, post a question on there, and we will try to clear it up for you because we want you to know everything, everything you need to know. So uh, right now we're going to take a short break, and I'll bring up Roger Beauchamp. And this is Pictures that I shot from another batch of them from the Rocky Mountain Nationals. I've got Roger Beauchamp from JB's Power Center here. I keep wanting to say JB's Automotive because that was the name that the that, that company went by for so many years. But it's now JB's Power Center. You guys cover a ton of different gear. You guys, you sell all kinds of stuff, car accessories. But this week, you're here talking car stereos. Car stereos is my specialty, and definitely. That, that, that's your background. So yeah. how, how long have you been... It, in the car stereo sort of business? Well, I've been doing car stereo for 20 years. I'm a car stereo nut, uh, you know, self-proclaimed, I guess you could say, <laughs> but been in the industry for 16 years. Um, it's my passion. It's what I love. I love everything about cars, but when it comes to the stereo, that's mm -hmm. key for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So you, you worked for JB's for how many years now? Uh, well, I started when I was 19 years old. Uh, it's been 16 years. There was a hiatus for three years in the middle. I had my own business. It was called Signature Audio. Mm -hmm. Then came back to JB's. That was oh, seven or eight years ago. So the rest is history, as they say. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. So we got a, we got a clever guy here. we got a clever guy here. Okay. Okay. Here's here's our setup. I've got a car that's got a nice stereo. Let's Somebody out there, they've got a car that has a nice stereo. It's it's okay, but it's it's just one shade of vanilla. You know, it's yeah. it's not bad, it's not awful, it's not distorted. So but you're talking just, about my stereo. It's, what you're I'm talking about mine. To be perfectly <laughs> honest, I'm talking about mine. It's Mine's just stock stereo. It's awful. It's, <laughs> it's stock and mine, yeah, same. I, I, I like it. It sounds good. Yeah. Medium volumes. But if, if there's anything I particularly enjoy, it just falls over itself. What's the most cost-effective way to improve that? Well, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Um, you know, there's the most common question that I get. Somebody will come in. Should I be buying speakers? Well, Should that, I be forking over the money for the big Kenwood? That is the question. <laughs> you nailed it. And, and 
Yes, you should. But there's <laughs> okay. there's better ways to do it. There's more um, better payoffs for you know mm-hmm. adding to your stereo system mm-hmm. before changing the speakers. Um, a lot of people think buy new speakers, it'll sound better, mm-hmm. and it will. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's a lot of things that you can do that are going to improve the sound much more, right? So, okay. you know, I'll tell them, first thing, are your speakers blown? Mm-hmm. Well, typically they're not blown, but no, when I turn it up loud, they don't sound very good. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem is and you're a trying blown, to... a blown speaker will still sound crappy at the lower volume. Yeah, they'll rattle and vibrate and really oh, okay. scratchy you sounding. You can tell if your speaker's Real blown. obvious, yeah, real obvious. But, okay. you know, any speaker, any small speaker, good or bad, if it's a premium audio system that came with your car from the factory or you've done some upgrades to it... Um, Small speakers just can't play bass very well. Mm -hmm. And when you start cranking it up, that's when they start to distort and not sound very good. So the key to to getting good sound in any sound system, doesn't matter if it's factory or an aftermarket sound system, is adding a subwoofer. Okay. Now, I know what you're going to say. I'm getting scared now. Because, yeah, that's the first thing. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want that. We're going to become one of boom, those boom, people. Right? Yeah. You know, they don't. Yeah. I understand I completely. Don't trim rattling off my car. Yeah, yeah. And that's not what we're after, right? You can add a huge amplifier with a couple big subs, and yeah, you'll get the boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of uh, ways to add better sound by just adding a subwoofer system. Now, typically, adding a subwoofer system, you just want to fill in the bottom end of the music, you know, and that's what a lot of. Stereos lack. Even mm-hmm. if it's a good quality stereo system, mm-hmm. small speakers just can't play bass very well. A lot of people think, oh, it's going to take up a lot of space in my car. You know, mm-hmm. well, well, where am I going to put it? In the trunk? How does it come through? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's nice about low frequencies is it'll carry right through the back seat, and you don't really know where it's coming from. It just fills the cabin of your vehicle. Mm. So I just happen to have something right here. It just happened to. Yeah, yeah, like I don't know how it arrived. <laughs> well, that's convenient. But, you know, <laughs> little little prop here. This is probably the most cost-effective way of adding it. This is a bazooka base tube. Okay. This little guy right here, right. as you can see, it doesn't weigh much. That's not bad. It's not going to take up much space. Yeah, you can truck tuck space that. is a premium for a lot of people. Well, yeah, that's, that's right. You know, and not even as not even as wide as me. What do you think it weighs, Dave? <laughs> I'm going to say maybe maybe ten pounds, twelve pounds, fifteen pounds. That's pretty accurate. It's, yes, it's, it's like two grocery bags. That's yeah. it's milk. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. When you carry milk and, and and it doesn't <laughs> pop. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So okay, cool. this little guy right here has an amplifier built into it. Okay. Because um, you do need an amplifier to run a subwoofer, and typically a subwoofer, because it's a bigger speaker, does require a little bit more power than your you know your radio can can put out. Right. So what uh, a lot of guys will do is add a, a subwoofer with a nice little enclosure and an amplifier, mm-hmm. and that's getting to be a little bit more complicated, a little bit more expensive. Mm-hmm. This is the most simple way of doing it, and real simple is a device like this one right here. This is the Bazooka FM modulated demo controller. This allows us to add this tube in your car just for you to audition it, to take a listen. Okay, okay. Just to see what I'm talking about. Because no heavy wiring, you don't have to strip the dash out. And... Plugs right into the cigarette lighter. Okay. This unit right here, you can plug your iPod into it, or it even comes with an SD card. You put MP3s on there. What it does is it'll broadcast the music to your factory radio so you can hear the music playing through all your speakers. Plus, it adds the subwoofer. It adds ah, the sub okay. bass. And it gets all its power to run all that right, right, right from the cigarette lighter. Right from the cigarette yeah. Lighter. Now, when you install something like this, there's not going to be any wires hanging, and it'll work right off your factory. Radio. You don't mm-hmm. need this. This is just so we can quickly install it in your vehicle so you can take a listen to it, and then you can determine, hey, is this for me? Well, statistics show... Seven out of ten people, if they listen to this in their car, will mm-hmm. buy it mm-hmm. because it's that much of an improvement. Um, you know, it's not the boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's going to just make your overall sound system sound better. Just the so richer, fuller sound. Base. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it addresses a couple different problems. Um, we were talking before when you crank up your stereo system and, uh, you know, it, it starts distorting it louder. Well, that's the bass. Mm-hmm. Well, now you can turn the bass down on the deck. But you still have better bass sound or more bass output than you've ever had because you got the subwoofer. And this is this has got an adjustment on it as well. Fully adjustable, yeah. You you know some people like a little bit more bass than others, so it's variable. And, I and suppose once you, if you had more or less insulation between the, the trunk, it's going to make a difference. Yeah, like a hatchback car, for example, is going to give you a lot more bass than a car with a trunk. Right. Um, right. A car with a trunk, that sub uh, the the bass coming from the, the bass tube will come right through the back seat and mm-hmm. fill the cabin. Um, and it's, you know, because of low frequency, you can't even really tell where it's coming from. It just seems to fill up the whole car. And, you know, 
like I said, it's not going for the big boom, boom, boom. It's getting to make your sound system sound better. Uh, by turning the bass down on the head unit, now your speakers in your doors aren't playing as much bass, mm -hmm. so they'll stay clearer. The vocals will sound better. The treble, the highs will sound much crisper. That's pretty you know, impressive. So it, all because of the subwoofer. So now, now this has, has a bass or like a stand or something. That would Basically, it's it's just got straps. You just strap it down. Anywhere. It can sit anywhere. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Is there is there a better way having it point? Into the car? Or well, every car is or... different. Every car is different. Typically, uh, for whatever reason, uh, well, I do know the reason, but we could get real technical if you want. <laughs> but That's let's keep it simple, Dave. Lays over. Yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's keep it simple. Yeah, deer Typically, a, a vehicle uh, with a trunk mm -hmm. aiming the subwoofer towards the back of the car is going to give you better bass response. So with the act of the speaker that, that we see on the end here, going back. Towards, towards the tail Towards yep. the back of the tail. Okay. Yep. okay. Much towards... distance because of the wavelength. Basically. Exactly. There's yeah. much room between the speaker and where you are because oh, the waves can be up to like a meter in length. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and well, if you aim this right at the yeah. wow. he, he nailed well, it. Pretty he nailed good. it. Yeah. So a lot of times just like if you're if you're aiming it at the back seat, as soon as it hits that back of the seat, it just kinda cancels it out. Oh, you know. Okay. So Depending on the vehicle, you can aim the subwoofer in different directions, and one way might sound better than the other, or whatever. You know? Well, I guess because it's it's you know relatively small, mm -hmm. you can move it around however you want, and you know it's not like it's taking up a ton of luggage. Exactly. Space. Yeah. Anyway, this this little guy here's got a. Oh, go ahead. Well, I have I have a question. Um, I've I've heard that that sometimes you just replacing the stereo can do a lot for your your soft speakers. It can, yeah, because uh, depending on the stereo that you have in the car, you know, like there's a, an amplifier built into that stereo, mm -hmm. and it's not like, you know, the big external amplifiers that you see. Yeah. Um, it's a little IC chip or a MOSFET type amplifier. Those don't have the sound quality of an external amplifier or of some of the aftermarket head units, the amplifiers that are built to them. Mm -hmm. So just by changing that head unit, you're actually changing the amplifier in the car, which can be a better sound quality right off I the I noticed that on my old car. That's why I was curious. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, I like the look of the stock look. I just I, yep. I, I I don't want because well after getting broken into uh, and having my GPS stolen that's that's a couple of weeks ago when when we didn't have a show that's why because somebody had broken into my car they swiped the flashlights that I talked about on the show before so. I'm kind of one of those paranoid guys. Like I don't want to give them anything interesting to look at because yeah. even when there was nothing interesting to look at, they looked for something interesting. So, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's, and that's, well, and coming back so to the subwoofer, you're going to bury that in the trunk yeah, so that you don't get right. to see that. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it will work on your factory radio, no problem. That's Cars cool. nowadays too are getting harder and harder to take the factory radio out to replace with an aftermarket radio. That's true. Um, you know, dashboards are all molded. There's you know so much stuff integrated into that factory radio mm -hmm. with you know. A lot of times not worth it either because the, the, the factory radios nowadays a lot better than you than know they used 10 to. years ago. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, big difference. And you could say that even 10 years ago they were better than 10 years before. They're always constantly, you know, getting better. That's and um, aftermarket radios typically will sound better. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you've got a premium audio system in your in your car. They're pretty good. But mm -hmm. what they're usually lacking is a subwoofer. It's the base. Yeah. Well, that's cool. The one thing that I like instead of a tube is adding the subwoofer and an amplifier separate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the tube is perfect. It's the most cost-effective way of adding it in. What is what is this usually run? Ballpark. Installed, Ballpark. you're looking at about 400 bucks. Everything, all in, you know. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more money than a, a good pair of speakers. Mm -hmm. You know, a good pair of speakers installed in your car is going to be, you know, two, $300. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more money, but the reward is huge compared to changing out your speakers. Right. Um, after you've done something like this, you, you know, 99% of the people that I talk to are more than happy with it, and they never want to add anything else. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that, that was great. Mm -hmm. You know, I want it to even sound better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when it's time it's to change wet, the speakers. It's their appetite. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, because it is amazing how good you can get the, you know, stereo system to sound in the car. Okay. My, oh, okay. Um, one quick quick question. Price difference stepping up, to, not, not to, like, big boomer uh, sub, but from this to the separate sub and amp like you were just talking well, about. Well, you can get into a separate sub and amp fryer for about $100 more. Um, okay. But realistically, sky's the limit when it comes yes, to yes, you know true. audio. The only, not saying that uh, uh, bigger is better, but mm -hmm. you know sometimes guys want to do two is. subwoofers. Sometimes yeah. they want to do you know a thousand watt amplifier instead of a two hundred and fifty watt amplifier. So the sky's the limit. But you know a really really good subwoofer system in a car that you know that's gonna 
once in a while you want to crank it up and you do mm -hmm. want a little bit more boom, yep. Yep. you're going to be looking at you know, five or $600 installed. Okay. You know? okay. So, yeah, yeah I that think gives that's... Us an uh, idea. Yeah. It gives us an idea. Okay, um, before I let you go, I, we were talking last night before the show, and you told me about a special event that JB's is doing in promotion with, with something that our next guest is going to be talking about, all promoting with the Edmonton Indy. What's going on with JV? Yeah, What's actually happening? huge. Uh, really cool. This came up uh, in the last couple of weeks here. Something that we learned, uh, one of the brands that we sell, one of the car audio brands, it's one of the biggest brands in car audio is Rockford Fosgate. Mm -hmm. And there's a sponsorship uh, on the Paul Tracy crew mm -hmm. with Rockford's, uh, Rockford Fosgate. So, you know, our people talk to their people sort of deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what we've uh, came up with actually is we're going to have uh, kind of a meet and greet autograph session with Paul Tracy at our West End location, uh, out on 170th Street there and 116th Ave. Mm -hmm. on, um, it's July 22nd, which is the Friday. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that day is practice day, mm -hmm. uh, 6 o'clock till 7.30 p.m. Hour and a half. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, so it should be really good. good. Um, they're doing an autograph session at the race mm -hmm. um, between 4.30 or 4 and 5.30, mm -hmm. and heading over to JB's, and we're going to keep the momentum going. And there's lots of parking around there, too, down that Tons of parking. road. Tons of parking. road. Including right on we the got a there. ton of parking. Um, we're we're going to have videographers, photographers on site, big screen, live tweeting. Um, you know, it's going to be really interactive. Uh, going to be a really fun event. And, of course, you know, Paul Tracy, front and center, Rockford Fosgate, JB's Power Center. That's it's going to be awesome. That's excellent. So, so the tweet you're going to want to follow is at JB's... Power Center. That's correct. At JB's Power Center. So so mark that down. Follow them, people. They're good folks. All right. That's with an R-E. Yes, yes. Canadian That's right. spelling Canadian. of Power yes. Center. <laughs> That's Center right. R-E is spelled is the way it's spelled up here. Thank you very much, Thanks, Roger. Dave. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Uh, we're going to throw, just before we bring up Dean Human, we're going to throw to some pictures that I shot at uh, about two years ago uh, at the Indy. And Dean's coming on, and we're going to talk about all of the other stuff that's going on in and around Race Week Edmonton. <laughs> Welcome back to AutoMojo. I now have here Dean Human from Race Week Edmonton. The stuff that's going on with all around the Indy, this is exciting stuff. Yeah, I think honestly this year is probably as exciting as it has been since the first year they announced coming here in Champ Car oh, yeah. many years ago. Uh, so many people have gotten on board. So many people are excited about the mm -hmm. race itself and all of the things that an international event brings to a city. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's the big difference this year is we're getting the extra buzz off of even, you know, great autograph sessions like, you know, with JB's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have stuff happening at West Edmonton Mall on Bourbon Street, Kingsway Garden Mall is doing some stuff. The drivers mm -hmm. and themselves are understanding that interacting and engaging with the fans, that's the key to more people watching, more people getting involved and big, uh, building better, bigger and better audiences. That, that's, that's great. And, and I think, I think, Having watched it sort of progress and, and expand the way it has, I think the start of it was with the reconfiguration of the track. That I think two things came along. I think the new promoter, Octane, has come in. Mm -hmm. They run a very professional race. I got to go to the Montreal Grand Prix this year, my first ever F1 experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. were amazing. It was completely professional. Everything was on time. The sound was amazing. It was a really good race experience. So I think they bring that to the table, and they bring mm -hmm. a lot of history in that area to the table. 
In addition to that, businesses are understanding that you do not get international events to come to your city all the time. And we are a privileged group in order to have the race here. So Mm -hmm. why not celebrate it? Why not turn it into the center point of a much bigger celebration and welcome the tourist traffic here that fill up our hotel rooms, that shop in our stores, and that go out and eat in our restaurants and drink in our bars um, we need those people, and we don't That's have right. a lot of major tourist events here in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. So if this is the draw, let's celebrate that and go for it. That's that's amazing. That's great. So so what are some of the events that are that are coming up? What are the, what are the some of the support events around? Well, race? we actually start this weekend, and, and we've you know partnered with Castro Raceway, and they have a big dirt race this and uh, street drags tomorrow night, and their mm-hmm. big dirt race, uh, Jacobs Construction uh, Night of Thunder on Saturday night. Okay. We have the airliner pull at the Aviation Museum, which is teams of people pulling a jet, a large jet. I read about this. Yeah. This, this isn't like like a little, you know, uh, no. personal jet. This is a 737. No. Yeah. This is just Bigger than crazy. most planes that actually fly out of Edmonton. Yeah, sadly. that's right. That's, that's a sad right. story, but uh, for another day. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, so it, it, it's like a corporate challenge thing. Yeah, it absolutely is. Groups of people can get together. It's a fitness thing. It's a fun thing. How can you pull it? Uh, there's a time limit. There's a, you know, there's a, there's how fast can you get it there? And uh, so it's a lot of fun. And I think that's a really unique and, and fun event. And we partnered with the Aviation Museum to do that. Tom Hendricks and his folks are just amazing. I love that. Um, I love that whole idea because I mean, whether it's company versus company, uh, front office staff versus the shop, division versus division. I mean. If you're a big company and you got you've got you know hundreds of people, you know what having little bragging rights for a whole year on, even if it's not best overall, who's best in that company? I think that's I think that's brilliant. I think that's a brilliant promotion. Yeah, it's amazing. It's fun. So then Sunday we move on. We have soapbox derby. So we have kids right on Victoria Park Hill. We're going to go down the hill in these soapbox cars. This is an extension of the uh, same series that ran in St. Albert just a little while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're hoping to develop that series over the whole province next year and have the finals be in race week here oh. in uh, Edmonton. We've had a lot of interest from other places, including Calgary, about doing that and doing some stuff down there and bringing the finals up here. So the Soapbox Derby itself is on Sunday. Uh, Monday, the mayor has taken us all down to City Hall, and he's mm-hmm. going to race uh, our own uh, ambas- race week Edmonton ambassador, Stefan who was just named to run in the uh, Indy Light Series, right, uh, both right. races, and uh, the Octane will be down there, and he's going to declare race week and, and temporarily re- rename uh, Rice Howard Way to Race Howard Way uh, <laughs> for the week. And like uh, that. that really I kicks like it that. off for us. Uh, the teams will start uh, you know, slowly filtering in. The TV crews come in, start to fill up, uh, and some of the tourists will start coming in. Wednesday's the big day. We have uh, we're kicking off uh, Race Week Edmonton, the street festival on on uh, on Race Howard Way, mm-hmm. and on this plaza right across the way called Centennial Plaza between the library and the Western Hotel. And this is all right downtown, right, right downtown. downtown, right in front. We of want the city people hall. to come right out of the hotels, walk downtown, come out of the buildings at lunchtime, uh, really engage and have an opportunity. And we're making as much of it as interactive as possible. Uh, to have that enjoyment and we know taste of edmonton's on the other side so have a bite come over and see what we're doing go back mm-hmm. have another bite you know mm-hmm. a little exercise between tastes is always a good thing yeah, yeah, yeah. um and so that starts out on wednesday uh we're having a media challenge in the afternoon at the ford fun zone ford came on in a big way this year and are sending in some incredible attractions that are completely interactive it's basically a play park that involves around cars uh, with displays. That's and great. then the sports teams in Edmonton have come around. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers are going to come in. The Eskimos mm-hmm. are coming in. FC Edmonton is coming in. Uh, and they're going to be there to engage with people and have a good time as well. Uh, we have other vendors as well uh, coming in. So there'll be sampling and things. And then all the while it's going on in sort of the Ford Fun Zone at the center, uh, Centennial Plaza area, there's the uh, actual street festival. So there's more giveaways, more sampling, uh, extended patios and music. We have a music every single day from about noon to 10 p.m. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So it's a very interactive area. And then on top of all of that excitement, <laughs> all of these other businesses have gotten on board. So mm-hmm. at the Edmonton Event Center, Nazareth is playing Friday night. I read that. Everybody remembers yeah. Nazareth from back in the day? Absolutely. I do not. Oh, <laughs> sure. Oh, man. All right, you can go with that. <laughs> they're 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 party bound for sure. If they're, um, awesome. 
Uh, the Gold Cup is on again, so Friday and mm -hmm. Saturday night. If you haven't had enough racing at the track, and, and I think people will really enjoy the new track. I've been out there. I've seen it. I, I think the experience is going to be completely different, and, mm -hmm. and it's going to be really awesome. But if you haven't had enough racing, you can go out there. Gold Cup has uh, been around for 30 years. And the Gold Cup goes on at Castrol Race. Yeah. It's a uh, clay oval with 360 sprints. Yeah. 360 injected. 650 horsepower, what, 1,800-pound sprint cars with a great big tabletop on the yeah. roof? Absolute blast. Second Absolute largest blast. race of the season is on, and it happens to be on the same weekend. Uh, Oil City is throwing some big parties. The Sherlock Holmes group is throwing some big parties. Mm -hmm. And on Saturday, in addition to our stuff downtown, they are throwing a classic car uh, show in support of the Youth Emergency Shelter. And they're going to have a whole whack of exotics intermingled with some classics uh, what, so and that, that is uh just off 100th street right across from city hall okay. so i think really a good opportunity to go down there they've worked really hard to put on this great event so i think an opportunity to see some cars and be in that culture um the whole way through and we've mm -hmm. sort of in tried to engage in the whole idea of art music and motion mm -hmm. and uh, i'll get to the art section but the music and motion is all there it's always about the cars and the races and being involved and engaged and the music's going to be there. We're going to have a lot of fun at a lot of venues. That is so cool. So, okay, so, so the art part. The art part. The art part is actually something we introduced because companies said, well, how do you get involved in all this stuff? So mm -hmm. we actually got a corporate sponsor this year who helped us get some uh, decorator kits together, checkered mm -hmm. flags and stuff like that, and we're getting them all over. There should be about 700 of them all over town by tomorrow, okay. and they'll all hopefully be up by Monday. And so we have the city is going to look like it's ready for a race. That's cool. And then corporations are coming on board and buying a, a, a corporate soapbox car. They can decorate it however they want to, or they can give it to a charity to decorate. Mm -hmm. And they can bring it out year after year and show it off in their lobby and stuff. And so it becomes a little bit like we had in the past with the cows and stuff. Right, right, is right. we're going to have these decorated cars around. It helps support Race Week. We're a total mm -hmm. not-for-profit event. We're running on corporate sponsors. And it's just a group of business people who felt very strongly that if we we're going to have an international event, we better celebrate it. We better have a reason to keep it. Mm -hmm. And we better use this as an opportunity to have a massive economic impact. And I think we can. It, it, it's really neat to see how these guys have come along. I mean, the, as Indy just about slipped away, uh, it was neat to see business community uh, pull together. And, and there was a paving thing that had to get done for the track to even be allowed to, to have the cars on it running at the speeds. There. And it came together. Everything's good. It yeah, really I think nice. I think it's something that everyone wanted, but you have to figure out how to say yes. And there yes. are ways to say yes, and it doesn't always involve going to municipal or provincial government. Yep. Sometimes the business community has to say it's an investment. We're making the investment. We'll get the return, and, it, and that's a good thing for us, and that's it's a good right. thing for the city. And so the group of us that got together, that's what we're about. We want to make it fantastic. We want people that to is. jump on board. We've had amazing support from the hoteliers. The Edmonton Destination Group came on as a major mm -hmm. sponsor this year. And uh, Greg Christensen from Christensen Development said, this is what building an event in Edmonton is all about. Here's some money. I hope this helps you uh, mm -hmm. get through your year and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The Journal and Global, we're doing major publicity all week long. Mm -hmm. So you'll see really cool supplement next Wednesday. Get Wednesday's Journal. Get Wednesday's Journal. Because we've got uh, flags. Down. And I should actually take the opportunity to mention the transporter convoy that day. Uh, mm -hmm. Edmund, uh, Octane uh, and the Edmonton Indy have worked with the city of Edmonton uh, to, these are beautiful trucks decked mm -hmm. out and completely clean, mm -hmm. and they're going to run down Kingsway Boulevard, down 109th Street, across 104th on the sort of what we would consider to be the back side of City Hall, mm -hmm. all the way down to Jasper Avenue, and then all the way up 82nd Street. Um, and then back to the track because they got to get back there and get to work. Right, right. But it all polished up and oh, some real honest-to-goodness cool. fantastic race fans are going to get a chance to ride in those transports oh, down yeah, the yeah. convoy. So that's, it's, that's a big kickoff, and that's between noon and 1. Starts around noon on Kingsway Boulevard. And then so if you figure out where, you know, it takes about an hour to get through that route slowly, um, that's going to happen. And uh, so there's a big, there's a lot of stuff going on, and this a lot is, of great places are doing I'm, stuff. I'm overloaded. My brain is, my brain is just so filled with stuff. Yeah, so, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, awesome. and I guess the other thing is the access, and I sort of touched on it, but the drivers and the teams themselves mm -hmm. want to be out there. So they're running from places like Wem to uh, Bourbon Street. Then mm -hmm. they're going to Kingsway, and they're going to sign autographs over there. So 
If you're in a part of town, they're going to show up. And what we said in Race Week Edmonton is we want to be able to provide as much information about as much events as possible Mm -hmm. so that people find out about it. Because in the few years past, there have been sponsored events and autograph sessions out there, but nobody knew. That's right. And you got to have that chance. You guys want to be sort of the central clearinghouse as well as helping to promote it, but central clearinghouse for all of the information, everything that's going on that's involved in Race Week. Absolutely. And we've had great contacts with actual teams themselves who have uh, followed us on Twitter and we followed mm-hmm. them back and mm-hmm. we were tw- live tweeting the uh, Toronto race with all of the controversy and having right. a great time with them and they're now posting to our anyone can post an event they just send it in we just post it up there on the mm-hmm. calendar and so they were starting to send out oh our drivers are going to be here and there and, and especially for the Indy Lights guys they're up and coming mm-hmm. not a lot of us know them but we will yeah. and yeah. uh they're great with the kids, and they're great to be out there, and they've always put on a good show. So they're they're excellent to be around. That is so cool. So we've covered a whole lot of areas. A ton. A ton of areas. And where's the best place for people to, to get this and sort of boil it down so they can they can plan their, their week? The big calendar is on raceweekedmonton.com. So raceweekedmonton.com. you got to go there. That's the center place. Okay. You can follow our Twitter feed as well, mm-hmm. which is uh, at Raceweek. EDM. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will be tweeting out on a regular basis. Every day we're going to put out a release of what's coming on the next day. Okay. So a oh, lot of the media, Twitter? everything through Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. We're going to post it on our site, so it'll be a PDF, and then we'll keep tweeting it out. Mm-hmm. So it's we're trying to get it out sequentially, and uh, and uh, you know be patient with us. We're getting through this year, yeah. but we have uh, already set. The whole group has met already, and we've said as soon as the IndyCar sets their 2012 season in September. We're all going to sit down uh, like three days later, and we're going to start planning for next year, and it'll be even bigger and better. And, and I think if you think about how the Great Cup was last year where people went downtown and had a blast, and they went on zip lines, and they, they just had a great party, yep. about 170,000 people enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Another 60,000, some of which were the same, enjoyed the, the actual football game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it all came together, and the city really celebrated. And if That's we right. do that with this event... Uh, we'll A, be able to keep the event, B, this event will show a massive profit and a good economic return for the city of Edmonton, and we'll all have a ton of fun. That's right. That's so right. as a race fan, I'm, I'm a, my, it's why I jumped in, and uh, my company and my wife, we're a big race fans, and we've seen what it can do in other cities, and we've seen the power. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty cool thing, and if uh, we can do that here, uh, it's, it's a big deal. You know what? I'm not even going to lie. I have goosebumps. Thinking it's, about this, it's just I do the, too. The whole synergy, yeah. everybody working together, and and you know, one has has a little thing, and all they've got to do if they've got an event that's that's indie related, is get a hold of you guys. It's added into the schedule. It, the promotion just you know, it's it a center place, and, and people can find it. Brilliant. You don't have to do it. You can promote it yourself, but drop it into ours, and we'll keep it. We'll be that center clearinghouse for information. That's perfect. We want everyone to just come and have a great time, and we want every tourist who comes in here this time to go back and say you know 20 of my friends got to come with me the next time cool cool now you have a giveaway i do have you a giveaway. have a giveaway for for lucky listeners lucky viewers uh and what is that uh for the first two individuals who contact us through the race week edmonton site through the contact us and say triple w uh raceweek edmonton.com yeah and say that you saw me here Dean on Newman. this show, Dean Auto Newman. Mojo, mm-hmm. with Dave Foley. That's right. Uh, we will give away the first two people, individuals, will get two tickets to Friday night's uh, session of the Gold Cup at Castro Raceway. That's very cool. So if you're if you're thinking about coming out to the race week, and you know what? Maybe you want, we want more racing. I'm emailing him right now. <laughs> you are disallowed. Oh. <laughs> the other thing I would say is that Octane's done an amazing job. Mm-hmm. If you have it. General admission, if you can be there for a day, go for a day. If you can be there for the weekend, go for the weekend. Um, They've been amazing to work with. They're great people. They really have put their heart and soul. In the very short time we've had, most everybody has starts planning 12 months in advance. This is a five-month window to get us to where we are. Mm -hmm. And that even that was really only, we were really at four months by the Mm -hmm. time we actually could get organized and get moving. So, you know, give them a chance. If you walked away from Indy and you said, I don't know if I ever want to go back, Give them a chance. That's take a cool. day. Take a general admission pass. You know, it's not a big investment this time. Mm-hmm. Check it out. I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be impressed. That's cool. It is really actually impressive that, that Castrol is, is coming on board and working with the Indy Group, too. 
I mean, sometimes racers kind of can be a little territorial, but this is this is such a big event. It's the the working together is just the way to go. It's well, everybody, beautiful. actually, the pictures you were showing, the Northern Alberta Sports Car Club, mm -hmm. first of all, they are the ones who do almost all the marshalling in all of Western Canada and are marshalling the Indy race. Right. They are fantastic guys, and they're coming on board. They're bringing a few cars down to show at the soapbox, and they cool. want it to succeed. Everyone wants this to succeed. It's the right thing. Yeah. Um, and we don't have to worry about people are always asking, well, what happens in, in a few years? Don't worry about a few years. That's we'll right. figure it out. Yeah. If we make this work and it's the right thing and, and, and it's a profitable and a, a good venture, we'll be there. So That's don't right. ask questions for three years from now. Enjoy what we have and let's, mm -hmm. uh, let's have a really good time. That's right. That's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you for coming on. Thanks. You know, this is this is great. I appreciate am, the opportunity. I am, I am jacked up about this. This is so awesome. Um, okay, so uh, raceweekedmonton.com. Follow them on Twitter at raceweekedm, all one word. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Okay, we're going to go to a break right now. I've got pictures from the Main Street Cruisers. Um, I went looking on the last show. I told you I was going to go check out the, the uh, Nissan Z car show. I got corrected. It's not Z car. We're in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, but unfortunately, where they were, they got rained out. We've had terrible, terrible rainy weather. Well, the Main Street Cruisers had their show in a mall, in uh, Bonnie Dune Mall. And so they went ahead with it. I'll tell you a little bit more about the Main Street Cruisers after the break, but nice little show. Check these out. We're just admiring the hood ornament on that old truck. I we got totally it. carried away looking at the art. I love those old cars. Anyway, that was the Main Street Cruisers. They're an Edmonton-based group. Um, I talked to uh, Roy and Marianne McClellan, met the president, Ken McClellan, uh, Mc yeah, McClellan, and uh, you know they, they have informal shows all the time in Edmonton. They've got a big show coming up next year in Red Deer. They're actually getting together with a few other associated groups. They're looking at about 800 cars meeting up down there it, it's going to be a monster uh the neat part is that a lot of these car shows try to find a charity to support and the one that they support is a crystal kids and you know what you gotta help these folks out uh they do a community outreach thing for underprivileged kids kids in the inner city that need mentoring that need you know some advice life skills coaching stuff like that uh they do a great job so help these guys out check out their website www.MainStreetCruisersOnline.com uh, Check them out. Help them folks out. They're, they're doing a great job. 
Um, my next little car show thing, I'm going to do the car show update here. Uh, Mopar Fest. This one's a little ways down the road, but you know what? If if I could get out there, I would love to go check this thing out if you're in this area. Mopar Fest in New Hamburg, Ontario, August 20th and 21st. It's the largest all Mopar show in Canada. Last year, they had 1,596 cars registered. Incredible. Over 20,000 people attended. Four, uh, 243 vendors it's going to be a big show. They've got a, a list of, of charities that they support uh, that's an arm long. In the last 16 years, they've donated over $2 million to charities just, wow. from, just from the car show, just from the Mopar Fest. And it's growing by leaps and bounds. So amazing, amazing outfit. Um, also, one that's a little more local to here, coming up August 2nd to the 6th in St. Albert, Everybody knows that around here, rock in August, you have got to go. If you're in the neighborhood, 658 cars last year, and they grow and they grow and they grow every year. Their people count because of where it's at, where the, where the, where the setup is, the fact that it's stretched over four days. They've had over 50,000 people attend through this thing, through the through the stretch of it so if you're interested in this if you're going to be in the area you want to check the thing out i highly recommend everybody if you've got any interest in cars go to a car show find one local or come to one of the ones i'm talking about here rock and august their website is rock and august.com so uh and their their charity they're raising money for alberta diabetes foundation so good things good things all around so um I think that uh, I think that wraps us up. Uh, thanks everybody for for checking us out. I want to give a big thank to Dean Human and to uh, Roger Beauchamp for coming in. Really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Uh, this was fun. Um, see you guys next time. <laughs>